Welcome to episode 138 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host, and today I'm excited to talk about something that we have never made the topic of a podcast. It's how I make decisions about the teams I put together. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I feel different today. If you are watching, like I'm wearing a plaid shirt. It has actual color in it. I wear a lot of black, a lot of gray. I walked in my agency, the building this morning, and people were like, whoa. I guess that means I'm usually dressed on brand. This is kind of like a weekend shirt. But either way, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like talking about some human element things today. So a lot of people that watch this podcast are in some level of leadership position, a lot of business owners, a lot of managers, general managers, CEOs, or even people that have to lead a team, team of freelancers, a volunteer team at a church or a nonprofit organization. So I think this element of teams and how you put together teams and how you make the right decisions is something that is a bit of an enigma to a lot of us, right? We go through life and we try to do our best. And just because you're good at some kind of task, doesn't mean you're a good leader. doesn't mean you're good at putting together teams or handling issues or encouraging people that need it or cultivating people's talents and abilities. It's a tough, complicated thing. And, you know, because it involves people and people's emotions and a lot of times people's livelihoods, if you're an employer, it's something that weighs heavy on the heart. At least for me, it does. And I feel like it always should weigh heavy because it's a major responsibility. I consider it a major responsibility when people trust me with their livelihood. So I think the weight of team decisions is just above just about every other decision that I will ever have to make or grapple with because it involves somebody else's life. So I take it incredibly seriously. I read in a book, it's back here somewhere, Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey, one of the early business books that I've read. You know, he said, if, if it ever gets difficult making a decision to take someone off your team, if it ever gets easy, then you should be really concerned because it, it should always be hard. And honestly, I've always lost sleep whenever it's come to that in my company. I wanna talk about some basic principles that I think everyone watching or listening can apply. I'm not talking about the, the nuances of hiring or questioning people during an interview or disc profile tests or Enneagrams and analyzing all these things for fit. I'm not talking about any of that today. I'm talking about some practical value that I hope you can leave right from here and use in your life. I hope that while I'm talking about these things for the next few minutes, things might actually clear up in your mind about some decisions that you need to make on your team. So basic high-level principles. There's one word that I think sums up how I would assess a team member, how I would assess somebody that I put on my team to work with other people toward a specific goal or action. Ready? It's contributor. Contributor. Does that person bring something to the team? Do they bring and contribute and pull the sled forward or do they sit in the sled and drag it? Contributor, like you can look up the definition. It's nothing very fancy. It's like one who contributes or something like that. But when I think about the word contributor, I already know what it means. And I think you know what it means. It's somebody that comes and brings something to the force of motion forward. One illustration that I heard that was really helpful for me was uh, from the New York Times bestseller and business leader, Michael Hyatt. And he said, basically, I want someone who comes with their own batteries. If they come with their own batteries, their own source of energy, their own source of drive and momentum, then they are contributing to the motion, to the energy. If they don't have their own batteries, guess what? Well, in order to function, they're going to have to draw from the energy and the mentality and the motion of other people. And that person is not a good person to have on your team. That person is not contributing. They are draining from everyone else. And this comes in, in a lot of ways. When someone gets hired in Congruent, my agency, they go through other people and other interview processes before I get to them. And I always want to have the final interview with whoever we hire, even if I'm not going to be working close with them. When I ask questions during that interview, I'm looking for some things that really don't have much to do with qualifications, but have to do with fit. We break those things down. I break those things down. Here's another thing you can use. Every good hire has both the qualifications and fit. 
Qualifications mean they have the talent and the skill needed to do the function you are hiring them for. They are qualified. Well, fit on the other side is much different. Fit means they have the cultural attitude that you need to contribute to your team in the intangible ways. Qualifications and fit. You cannot succeed as an effective team member if you don't have both the qualifications and the fit if you're going to be part of a team that I have. And here's the reason. If you have the talent, but your attitude and your preferences and your desires are not aligned with that of the team, there's going to be unbelievable tension and friction. Not being a good fit doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you won't fit somewhere else. It just means that you won't fit here because again, it's draining and withdrawing from the momentum that we are trying to accomplish. So qualifications and fit. So if you have qualifications, but you're not a fit, it doesn't work. Conversely, if you are an amazing culture fit, you care about others, you serve others, you have a great attitude, you have can do, right? You are trying to help other people grow, you're outward focused, all that amazing fit for congruent culture. But if you don't have the skills, right, like to edit a video, if you don't have the skills to um, set up a presentation with a client, if you don't have that, guess what? It still doesn't work. So I really boil it down to qualifications and fit as we get down there. Qualifications are skills. Fit is attitude. Great quote about attitude from the one and only Albert Einstein says this, weakness of attitude becomes weakness of character. Weakness of attitude becomes weakness of character. So... When you're looking at someone on the fit side, bad attitude, guess what? That also starts to seep into the type of character that person has. And a person's attitude and character affect everybody around. They suck the energy out of a room. They suck the momentum out of a project. They demotivate other people that would actually be motivated and be excited and be optimistic about contributing. But everybody knows, right? You're in a meeting and you're going around the room. And everyone seems pretty happy to be there. And one person, it takes one person to have a bad attitude and it just sucks everything out of the room. We've all been there. You've been there. You might be thinking of someone on your team right now that does that every time and always. No, those are absolutes. I try not to speak in absolute, but you know what I mean. And I have found more and more that separating that person from a team is actually being very faithful to the team that is committed, is motivated, and does want to grow. I've watched time and time again When you remove that person from the team, the rest of the team actually sits up a little straighter and they feel better because they know you as the leader care about them thriving. They care, you care about their environment. You care about them growing. So when we talk about these things of how do we make hiring decisions? How do you make team decisions? How do you make firing decisions? Sometimes the macros are all you need. It it doesn't have to be complicated. Again, today I talk about this. Is the person a contributor? Do they bring their own batteries or do they draw from other people? Do they have qualifications and fit? Qualifications is the skill. Fit is the attitude because we know that weakness of attitude becomes weakness of character and the wrong person allowed to continue on that team will drag the energy down. They will not just drag the energy. Everything in business has a financial consequence. They drag the opportunity down and they actually are counteractive to the commitment that you've made to the people that want to grow, want to move forward, and want to be selfless in making sure everyone around them is growing too. So these are the hard issues to deal with. These are the issues I lose sleep over, but they're also some of the most common issues. So I hope that talking about them today helps you make better decisions in your company, helps you grow and cultivate better teams so you can be more faithful to the people that rely on you as the leader to help them thrive and see the way forward. I hope you move forward this week. I hope you thrive. I hope you bring energy and good attitude and your own contribution to every team you're a part of, to every client you work with, to every family member that you live with this week as you pursue clarity. I will see you next week. I'm going to try to slide out of this thing like I slid in. Ready? You just gotta love songs.